Welcome to the Stickers on the Mic podcast brought to you by StickerGiant.com, where we talk with our customers about how they started their business, how they're marketing their brand, and how they're growing their company. Without further ado, it's time for the Stickers on the Mic podcast from StickerGiant. Let's get on with the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Stickers on the Mic. Andrew with you once again. Very excited to be dialing in from Sleepy Hollow, New York, Yossi Sargent from Task Force and Into Action Lab. Thank you so much for joining us today. Absolute pleasure. So I stumbled across um, your all sticker sheet um, for, I, it was for February, right? Um, and it was this awesome, you can't see it on the screen, but there you go. It's this um, sticker sheet that has like Black Lives Matter and, you know, Black History Month and all that stuff. So I was like, I need to learn more about this, this company. So luckily that's what I get to do for a living. So um, I was like, what is Task Force, Task Force all about? And, and I was very intrigued. So tell us a little bit about Task Force. <clears throat> yeah. So I'm the founder and chief cultural officer at uh, Task Force. We're a boutique uh, agency that uh, works at the intersection of art, culture, and social justice um, in social impact. We you know, work under basically two core principles. One is that there's never been a social movement built um, in history without artists at the tip of the spear and that um, politics, the second idea is that politics is where some of the people are some of the time and culture is where all of us are all the time. And so to expand democracy and to expand the way that we participate in shaping our own future, we need to expand the way that we talk about it and engage people in it. Um, and so we do cultural engagement around issues of import to communities around the country. Nice. And so, you know, that leads us sort of to like what brought you to politics and, and using the art as sort of your mode. Um, you know, tell us a little bit about your background before Task Force that sort of gave you the experiences and, and the motivation to do something like this. Yeah. I mean, I grew up um, in a time when school was black and white. And everything that was happening outside of school was technicolor. Um, you know, in school, they were saying, you know, here's math one and here's English B. And out of school, it was like raving and breakdancing and moonwalking and punk rock and like graffiti and poster art and radness. You know, I like I was immediately attracted to culture and to the ephemeral life that that it just stimulated my spirit and my soul and I was hungry for it and I pursued it and I didn't stick to one I wasn't like I'm a skater and then I just like lived in the skate community I, I wanted all of it and so I just kind of moved across counterculture um, and just voraciously absorbed as much as I could and it led me to a path of um, trying to figure out what the kind of infrastructure under this culture looked like and how, you know, how I could um, tap into it. Um, and, you know, at, at about 16, maybe 17, I came across it. Um, I had a pivotal moment when I came across an artist named Robbie Canal, who is, a legend in the poster world um, in the kind of um, artists taken on the machine universe. Um, and they were going out and they were wheat pasting in Los Angeles um, to protest uh, police violence and to protest um, anti-abortion laws at the time. And this world that I had known of graffiti and vandalism and pop culture immediately I was exposed to, wait, I can, I can both be a part of this counterculture and be doing it in a meaningful way that might actually affect the world around me. It allows me to like project into the world who I am and what I believe. And it like sealed the deal for me. And I, uh, what was fun became power um, for me. And, um, and I just, uh, I got hooked and I kept doing it. So I, I ended up in, you know, needing a job and started in, out in marketing. And, you know, at the time, um, you know, it was fun to just like sell stuff and be cool and doing cool things. And I 
got to work on a bunch of rad marketing projects, including like I was one of a, a big team of people that, you know, helped to build the Scion brand for Toyota and um, as a vendor. And, and, you know, that was all fun and it was all great. Um, but then, um, then I met uh, Barack Obama's team when he was senator and, and they said, Hey, you know, you want to work on something different and uh, invited me to come work on the campaign right. um, for him for running for presidency. And they said, you know, we need, we're going to need you and the comms team and we're going to need the editorial board over at, you know, the long beach Gazette and the Sacramento B. And I was like, Oh God, that's what you think you need. Like, what about, you know, skate and hip hop and how are you going to get the young people to pay attention? Right. They were just, just kind of like, huh? <laughs> and so I was like, I'm going to work for you, but I'm going to do, I'm going to do it my way. And I called my friend Shepard Ferry and I said, like, let's go. And he made the art that by now we all know the hope poster and the hope sticker and the hope image. And I worked with him and a bunch of rad, just rad artists from Ron English El Mac, you know, uh, Amy Martin, Tara McPherson. I mean, like we just like worked with David Cho, you know, probably 400 artists over the course of the next three years to build a culture around that campaign that felt like how I was living. And, um, right. and it was rad. Nice. Um, so that, you know, kind of brings us sort of back to the present day, right? Because you've done all that and you've leaned on all that. Um, as far as task force goes, you know, what what are you most excited about that you all are doing the project that you have that's like top of mind for you all? Yeah. You know, look, we right now, the t task force is we are half of our work is client services and we work for people and organizations that are trying to take on big challenges like how do we end hate in the county of los angeles right like wow. whoa right, right? Big, right. Big, big ass challenges that's not driving more traffic to a website <laughs> and, you know what but the reality is the only way you change something like that is through culture you don't change that through a law change you don't change that right. through like a billboard you have to work on culture and so, you know, we're, we're knee deep in building real effective ways of building resilience and changing the way that we talk and live in, and, and testing like really new and innovative approaches to that stuff on one side of our business. And on the other side of our business, <clears throat> we take on problems and there's no clients there. There's just problems that we need to solve. And, and so we, we, build solutions and then we figure out how to pay for them. That's the stuff that I find really exciting. And right now that's where those stickers come from. That's uh, we're running a project called the into action lab. Um, basically about two years ago, we said, who's giving us the stuff that we need in order to tell the world how we feel. Right. I believe that black lives matter. And I want to make that point clear. I want to wear the shirt. I want to wear the hat. I want to wear the, right. I want to give, make the sticker. I need the gif. I need the meme. I need all the things. Where do I find it? And the reality is, is the people who make the best stuff, the artists are like not indexed anywhere. There's no like website for black lives matter artists, right? You kind of got to like, you can Google image search, right? You can look on a product website to find art. You can search it on Instagram. It's not, let's just say it's not easy, right? Right. And then on the other side, you've got these nonprofits who like are built and designed to actually tackle this shit, but don't have the creative capacity to do it in any cool way. None of them do. Let's be honest. Right. They all make stuff that like is branded and talking sounds like politics and it doesn't it doesn't feel like my Instagram feed. And so we sought to build that bridge. And in the last two years, <clears throat> we started with gifts because it's everywhere. Every right. phone, every button, every social media account, you hit the gift button and it's a giant repository. And so we started um, a project called Into Action. We make unbranded free content that is oh, nice. designed to help shift narratives around important issues and give you the stuff you need in order to like express yourself. So we're making things like that's racist, right? So when you're in a Twitter fight and somebody says some shit and you need to call them out, 
we've given you that's sexist, that's racist, that's misogynist, you're a prick, right? Like we've, we've put that into place. Right. We've also built up, hey, this is why funding the police is not a really good option. And it would list it out. Here's what you can do with that money instead that will reduce the amount of crime so that you don't need as many police, right? Like, and we lay it out for you, but we do it in a way that feels like the internet. And so in the last two years, We've made 25,000 gifts. We are yeah, you have almost top. 50 billion views. We yeah, just yeah. broke a, bil- a billion in like three years because we have a gift program. No, too, no, 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 no. We just passed 155 billion views. That's oh, one. Oh, I'm just looking at just Giphy. I mean, like and just you, Giphy. And you're looking at just one page of many pages that we run. So, oh, nice. Because like your branded oh, account, that's still, like, that's still pretty impressive <laughs> though, like for that time period. You know what I mean? We just passed SpongeBob with more views than Bones. Get out of here. Yeah, because we, we've been doing gifts for a few years. It is one of the, you know, to a sort of a strategic uh, strategic marketing thing. Like gifts are just gold. They're gold. You know, the reality is, is we're at 155 billion views in two years, and I haven't spent a penny on advertising. Right. right. I mean, it costs money to produce these things, but at the same we, time, we make, like that's- you make the product, but I got evergreen content that is, it's, and here's the thing that people don't really think about. Giphy is the second largest search engine on the internet. Right. Google's the first largest. Giphy's the second. People wow. are searching for stuff. So if yeah. you can deliver them the product that they're looking for in their search, they've asked for it, they want it, you're giving it to them. Right. It, and it's like know. a conversational thing too, know. right? Like people don't like, have to we don't talk. No. We just send gifts back and forth. Now, like even our team on Slack, it's just like, we'll have, you know, half an hour goes by. We're talking it. professional platforms like Slack and email. We're talking right. social public platforms like Twitter and Facebook. We're talking wall, wall communities like Discord and Reddit. We're talking right. SMS. We're talking yeah. Signal. We're deep in we're deep in, in Discord. Even Venmo comes up now. If you put up rent, you know what I mean? You've got, you've got, yeah. you I mean, can have the rent is too damn high that Jimmy McMillan. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's I, what we're doing. And so put my it this way, like, and, and we acquired the, the largest GIF analytics business last oh, year. GIF Lytics. GIF, GIF Lytics. Yeah. And what we've done is we've scraped the search terms and we can tell you what, what is happening in the search universe around on GIFs. And so in the early pandemic, I'll give you an example. In the early pandemic, people were searching for, Toilet paper. It was right. a really big search term on Giphy. And so what right. we did was we made bouncing toilet paper rolls, holding protest <laughs> signs that said, wipe away student debt, wipe away rent. Yeah. Right. And so you didn't know you wanted wipe away rent necessarily, but when you got there, you actually used it. And that stuff did, it crushes. Right. And it's kind of the same every day. Right. We, we can, I can tell you what people are looking for basically every day. And then, right. so one of the channels that we run is called Hello Wall. It's actually a partnership with Google and with Giphy. Google runs Tenor, which is the, the other large GIF operation. And yeah, we use Tenor too. Yep. And if you look at the top 25 terms, they're, they're what you would expect. Happy birthday, Monday, BFF. Sad. Nice. <laughs> yeah. But what you get back is either really cheesy or really racist. There's a whole right. bunch of oh. blackface on, on, oh. on, in the GIF world, right? And what we've done is we've set out to diversify and to have an honest mm. reflection of what those terms should look like. And so we- Oh, been- so targeting terms to like flip the script on it so it's not dominated by the things that shouldn't be bubbling up. Yeah. So that's why- like a cultural, that's the cultural we impact make there. Good night with two lesbians laying in bed who are talking on their phone. They look at each other, kiss, say good night, turn off the light. We make, I love you with a, with two hands coming together, one white, one black. We make sure. good. We make happy birthday with a person with, uh, with henna markings on their hands, right. Representing our AAPI brothers and sisters. Everybody should be able to express themselves with content that reflects who they are, that expresses their pride, that a show that allows us to build the kind of pluralistic society where we can all thrive and be ourselves. 
And it doesn't, mm. it's not going to happen if somebody doesn't put intentionality under it. Mm-hmm. And so that's what we're doing is we're, we're, we have built a crank machine that is trying to take what we, what, what is basically a passive repository that much like a lot of what we call the gray web, right? It's not mm-hmm. the dark web and it's not the light web. It's just kind of the gray web where it's just been open field. Yeah. And a lot of that gets filled with nihilistic and dark content and dark creations because it's easy. Yeah. It's easy. It's lazy. It's our base instinct oftentimes. And we put intentionality in those spaces and create invitations for those people to level up and say, you know what, we can do this and we can do this better because we're not the ones creating this stuff. What we do is we seed the field and we say, it's an invitation that says, come on, come join us, make this kind of shit. If people actually want it. And then what happens is other people go, oh, you know what? They're doing pretty well doing stuff that's not, that isn't racist. Why don't I just do that too? I didn't even know I could do that. And then they start making it and they start succeeding. And then the other people start doing it. And sooner or later, this stuff turns its tide. So yeah. this is our work. This is the kind of work we do. I haven't even gotten into our meme work and into our stick. I've been like, we, we're deep in this stuff. Mm-hmm. But the reality is, is we give people, I think I've said already, the tools they need to express themselves. Yeah. And that's both digital and it's physical, right? Stickers are 100% still an important expression, right? Our clothing is still an important expression of who we are. Culture is a lens through which we see the world around us. And we, it, is the, it is the filter through which we make decisions on how we treat each other, on how we vote, on what kind of laws we want, right? A punk rock kid listens to a particular kind of music, wears a particular kind of clothes, repeats particular phrases that kind of shape how they see the world around them. Right. It, re- it reinforces the worldview, anarchy, oftentimes fierce independence. Right. There's some vibes that go with that culture. Right. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, knitters have a very different right. They're sharing patterns with each other. There's a very different culture through which they filter their information. We need to be making content and stuff for all of them. Right in very unique ways that all lead towards a central place, which is like respect, empathy, mm-hmm. pluralism, the basic stuff that allows us to live in community with each other in, in like, without being hostile, right? Without right. treating each other like garbage. Totally. Well, that's fantastic. And uh, thank you very much for sharing, uh, you know, yeah. well, we got into the weeds on some stuff and high level. Um, and we really appreciate it. And, and, you know, we say on the show every time, you know, every sticker has a story. Today's story, of course, is the task force. I'm holding it up there, but the background is taken away. But um, it's a fun sticker. And, of course, it'll be online, friends, if you're uh, listening in later. Um, Yossi, thank you so much. Absolutely. Absolutely. A pleasure. 100%. And thank you guys for doing what you do because, you know, making this stuff is uh, – you know, we're one piece of a long chain of people that it takes to to get something done. And it takes companies like yours who partner with organizations like ours to maybe able to effectively do this work. And we're just really grateful that you guys are here and successful. And we look forward to growing and doing more and reaching more people and appreciate you. There you go. Um, well, everybody, uh, thank you so much for tuning in as always. It's my pleasure to be Andrew. Um, and we will be seeing you next time. You'll see, uh, have a wonderful weekend and, uh, Take care of yourself and everybody around you. All right, be well. That wraps up this episode of Stickers on the Mic, brought to you by StickerGiant.com. You can download us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, or your favorite podcatcher. Thanks again for listening to Stickers on the Mic. We'll see you next time.